Hi, in this video I'll be talking about the frontal lobes and its different parts, what happens to our behaviour when they're damaged, what causes frontal lobe damage, and how to test for frontal lobe damage. So, let's start with a quick recap. If you haven't already seen my previous video, what is the function of frontal lobes? What do they do? The frontal lobes have many executive functions and control our behaviour based on our social and environmental situations. Although the frontal lobes consist of many different areas, in this video we'll be focusing on three. These are the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is in the dorsal or front and lateral or side of the brain, the medial prefrontal cortex, which is in the middle part of the prefrontal cortex, starting from the outside of the corpus callosum, and the orbital prefrontal cortex, which is in the lower part of the prefrontal cortex. Starting with the first one, what does the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex do exactly? This area has quite a few responsibilities, which include motor planning, organization, integration of sensory information, which is where the brain takes in the information from all the senses and puts them together in order to make sense of it. For example, it can be quite difficult for the brain to try and interpret visual information without auditory information, and so both senses are compiled together in order to make sense of it. This could be an indication that people with significant hearing loss that are accustomed to sign language and lip reading have a higher functioning dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, specifically in this area of functioning. This area also deals with the regulation of intellectual function and action, and making sense of new information such as in lectures or when you're reading a book. And it also deals with working memory. So basically, as it's part of the frontal lobes, it's in charge of the executive processes to do with thought and action. But as I've mentioned in the past, these functions are not exclusive to this area of the prefrontal cortex. Damage to this region of the brain can result in what is known as disexecutive syndrome, which is basically when you will find problems with your mood and social judgment, planning, abstract and flexible thinking, controlling your behavior such as controlling certain impulses, and how you use your memory. It's not to say that damage to the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex will definitely make these functions a lot worse. It definitely depends on the degree of damage, or what was the cause or type of damage done. Interestingly, Damage to certain areas of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex affects our ability to deceive and lie. A study done by Carton and Backman used TMS, or transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is essentially a device that can temporarily shut down regions of the brain, which doesn't damage it as it's completely safe, in order to find out whether a decrease and increase in certain functions can be found. Carton and Backman used this device on their participants to shut down the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex while they were shown colored discs and were told to either tell the truth or lie at their own will. And they found that shutting down the right hemisphere in this region of the prefrontal cortex decreased the rate of lying while doing the same to the left hemisphere, there was an increase in lying. Let's move on to the second part, which is the medial prefrontal cortex. What does it do? There's actually not much known about this region, although some studies have suggested that it has certain functions using fMRI, such as imagination, error detection, how you present and think about yourself, your ability to perceive other people's perspective, and how you process emotional stimuli in terms of the self. Damage specifically to this region on its own has been very rare, and so that's why there isn't really much known about this area, but it is likely that it will affect the functions already mentioned as well as the functions from other areas of the prefrontal cortex. Even with TMS, it'd be quite hard to shut down such a specific area in the brain without getting other areas as well, so studying it has been difficult and limited. Lastly, what does the orbital prefrontal cortex do? This area of the brain deals with how we predict the punishments and rewards of an action, and how we know when an action will deal with a reward or consequence. So if you suddenly become ill, but not ill enough to skip a lecture, you might think it would be rewarding to stay at home, or even think it would be rewarding to still attend a lecture, with the potential consequences being you might miss vital information from your studies, or become more ill as a result respectively. It also deals with how we adapt and make decisions in our environment and emotional stability. As is the case with other areas of the prefrontal cortex, Damage to the orbital region will result in difficulty or disruption with the mentioned functions. You can become emotionally unstable or have outbursts, become unable to control your behaviour in terms of being talkative and active, and you may find yourself become easily distracted. Some syndromes that are caused by frontal lobe damage include emotional and personality changes. I've already discussed this very briefly in my first video. It's such a famous and classic case in neuroscience and even just psychology in general, you'll be hearing and reading about it quite often. It's the case of Phineas Gage. So basically, Gage, after a series of events in 1848 in railway construction, got an iron rod pierced through his frontal lobes that caused him from having a sound, productive mind to being impatient, emotionally unstable, unable to organize and plan, 
and it was almost as if he reverted to being a child, as described by Harlow. Some other changes to do with prefrontal cortex damage include pseudo-depression, meaning loss of motivation, sexual desires, emotion, and talking, and or pseudo-psychopathy, meaning immature behavior, increase in motivation for sexual behavior, being too talkative, swearing a lot, and a lack of restraint. It's possible to have both with frontal lobe damage depending on the situation. Other syndromes that can occur through frontal lobe damage is to do with abstraction and judgment, in the sense that people might not be able to think beyond the literal meaning of a word or phrase. They won't be very good at planning and have poor executive control and function, organization, and the inability to exhibit divergent thinking. So they won't be able to think of many possible solutions to a problem. Instead, they will only ever see one. Some quick tests you can do to determine whether someone really has frontal lobe damage that affects their abstraction and judgment, such as asking them to interpret proverbs or metaphors, how two words are linked or can be linked together, and asking them how they would achieve certain tasks so that they would have to make a plan to achieve it. Another syndrome affects attention and memory, in terms of being easily distracted or being inattentive, having difficulty in retention or recollection of memory. So, there are ways to diagnose someone with frontal lobe damage. These are the Wisconsin card sorting test, trail making test, the Stroop color and word test, and the Tower of London test. Starting with the Wisconsin card sorting test, it's basically where you're given a set of cards to sort them in order of color, number, or shapes. The tester won't say which order it's supposed to be in, only that it will mention when a mistake is made. And the rule will change every 10 correct placements, and the job of the participant is to properly guess the correct sequence each time. Someone will be diagnosed with some form of frontal lobe damage if they are unable to perform this task, which shows that they can't adapt to new situations or strategies. The second is a trail making test, which involves connecting numbers and letters together. So like A1, B2, C3, D4, etc. as fast as you can in 30 seconds. And those with frontal lobe damage will achieve this with great difficulty as they'll struggle with performing two tasks at the same time, so counting and basically reciting the alphabet. Then there's a Stroop test, which I personally find quite fun. This involves reading letters and words that are filled with a certain color, and you need to read out the color of that letter or words, and sometimes you're even reading out the word that isn't the color that's filled in. Having difficulty in this task will indicate some form of frontal lobe damage as it tests your inhibition to hold back automatically reading out the word which has to be overridden in favor of reading out the color. Another is the Tower of London test, which involves pegs and balls, and various rules like reallocating them so that each peg is only one ball, or each peg only has one color, and the idea is to use as few moves as possible. Those with frontal lobe damage will find this difficult as they can't really organize and plan ahead very well, and will end up taking a while or using up many moves before they solve the test. Finally, I'll talk quickly about the causes of frontal lobe damage. The most common will be trauma to the frontal part of the brain, such as any form of physical damage like after a car crash. There's also damage caused by blood or leaking brain such as strokes. And there's also frontal lobe seizures. They can severely damage the frontal lobes, although it is difficult to diagnose this way. There's vascular diseases like dementia and the deterioration of frontal lobes, tissues, and oxygen in the blood. MS or Multiple sclerosis can cause frontal lobe damage where the myelin sheath basically breaks down and disrupts signals in the brain which affects mood, memory, and emotion and behavior. Frontal lobe damage is also associated with mental illnesses such as depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and even schizophrenia. So that's it for this video. Next I'll be discussing the development of the prefrontal cortex from adolescence to late adulthood. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.